When Marita Bonner graduated from Radcliffe College in 1922, she began writing for the Crisis and Opportunity magazines. And I'm just going to take a moment to discuss these two publications. The Crisis um, is the flagship magazine of the NAACP, and Opportunity was a literary and intellectual magazine that sought to promote new talent. Bonner, along with many other writers, found editorial support and a wide audience through these two magazines. In fact, um, many of her essays and short stories either appeared in The Crisis or in Opportunity. Archived copies of The Crisis and Opportunity are available online. And if you're interested in reading poetry, short stories, and essays from the Harlem Renaissance in their original context, I would encourage you to read through some copies of these magazines. Now, to return to Marita Bonner. For someone who was so well-respected and published so many short stories and essays during the Harlem Renaissance, Bonner does not receive the attention she rightly deserves. A commentator has said of Bonner that, quote, she is one of the many writers whose efforts to discuss intersectionality have been dismissed, forgotten, are largely eradicated from the modern canon, end quote. In terms of intersectionality, the critic is re- referring to Bonner's identity as a black woman. In her prize-winning essay called On Being Young, a Woman, and Colored, which was published in Crisis Magazine in 1925, Bonner discusses her identity as a black woman, and the tension between her individual identity and the racial and gender roles society expected her to fit into. And as a woman with a first-class education from an exclusive college, Bonner also notes the dichotomy between her privileged status and that of her responsibility to the black underclass, a tension that many writers of the Harlem Renaissance felt. In 1927, she published one boy's story under the name of Joseph Marie Andrew in The Crisis, perhaps feeling that her first-person narration would be better accepted if readers believed her to be a man. Bonner lived most of her life in cities, in three urban areas, Boston, where she was born and educated, Washington, D.C., where she worked for eight years, and Chicago. As she won literary prizes, Bonner became a literary model for younger writers, such as Richard Wright. Her stories of the 1930s and 40s portrayed Chicago, as one critic puts it, quote, a fallen world in terms of both race relations and the doom aspirations of the city's black immigrants from the South, end quote. And it was this depiction that certainly motivated Richard Wright in his own writing. In the 1940s, Bonner returned to teaching and also focused on raising a family. So in a sense, she dropped off the literary map in her later years, which seems to have been by choice. Bonner died in 1971 at the age of 73.